It's the National Football League on EA Sports. And if it's in the game, it's in the game. It's the Denver Broncos and the Baltimore Ravens. All that and more coming up next. With Chesapeake Bay gleaming in the distance, we are inside m and Bank Stadium near the Inner Harbor in Baltimore, Maryland. Straight ahead, we've got a pretty good one on tap here as it'll be the Denver Broncos taking on the Baltimore Ravens. Up in the booth with Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and kick off straight ahead, CD. What's one thing that you're going to have your eye on? I think about what the great coaches of the past always said, the key to any ball game. Can you rush theirs and protect yours? Well, in this case, both of these teams get after the quarterbacks. I'm watching the pass rush. Will Lutz ready to get this one started. And off we go from M&T Bank Stadium. Taken at the goal line. Well, number eight, Lamar Jackson trotting onto the field at quarterback, ready to lead this Ravens offense. Early part of his career, defense has really had to focus on his running ability, and they still do. But now, he's turned himself into a true dual-threat quarterback. When he plants his cleats in the ground and turns it loose, good things happen downfield. Jackson looking to throw right away. He'll bite, and he's gonna have to eat this one as down he goes. Baron Browning from his outside linebacker spot gets him down there for a loss of four. A lot of talk the other day about them wanting to quiet this home crowd early and often. Very first play of the game, they do just that. You're exactly right about that because that's often a conversation when you go on the road and you travel. Hey, let's take the crowd out of it. What a great way of doing so by putting the quarterback on the deck. And he's going to be unable to get upfield as they take him down at the 21-yard line. Only a yard there on the keeper, and that's going to leave him with a third down. And not an easy spot here. They'll be in search of 13 yards to try to pick up the first. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And that is incomplete. That was the first third down try of the game, and clearly something was off in the execution of that play. Good news, they've got a whole game left to clean that up and start clicking on those key third down throws. Fourth down, and out comes Jordan Stout here to punt. And Marvin Mims deep for Denver. This is taken at the 18. Dances by him. And when it's said and done, it's a 58-yard punt. And the Broncos take over. First down and 10. So out comes this offense to take over for the first time. They'll be let out by their quarterback at 6-2 out of Auburn. It's Jared Stidham. For a brief time, he was thought to be a possible successor to Tom Brady while he was still in New England, but that didn't materialize. But opportunity may still knock for him to start in the NFL today. Definitely has the arm and mobility to make plays against NFL defenses. All he needs now is consistency. They begin the drive with Williams. And they're going to stop him right at the line of scrimmage. Just no cutback lane to be found whatsoever. Second and ten. Looked like he was trying to bounce it outside, but no success. Yeah, sometimes you got to just figure out where you're going to go, and sometimes you just have to take it to another spot. And trying to get it outside, the defensive pursuit was there and just ran him down. Now Stidham. 
He's got his 6'5 receiver. That's Tim Patrick. Give him 14 yards there and a Denver first down. But one of the ways the quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field. And here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Now a give up the middle to Williams. And he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. And that was a quality play to start a new set of downs. That was simply an offensive line winning the battle up front and winning in a big way and giving their guy in the backfield a nice lane to hit. Ball on the 40 now. Here's second and six. Here's Stidham. Now a quick throw there, but it's going to be incomplete. It certainly looked like maybe his third or his fourth read on his progression. Just trying to find his outlet man that time. Ends up leading him just a bit too much. So after the second down incompletion, they'll come up now against a third and six. Off the draw, here's Williams. And he will be brought down at about the 43 that time. Only two yards, and it'll be a punt on their opening possession. Well, this was just simply excellent defense. On this third down, they had to be alert for the possibility of a pass, but that didn't stop them at all from understanding what was going on when they decided to run the football, and they just swarmed and stopped them for almost no gain. Fourth down, so on is the punter, Riley Dixon. And this is going to hit the goal line and continue on into the end zone for a touchback. Baltimore is set to take over here for their second possession of the game. And on the first drive, three and out. And I know that these are professional athletes, but I would imagine sometimes you, you get the nerves at the beginning of a game still, don't you? Those don't ever go away. And typically what I've heard from guys and what I remember from playing, if you don't have nerves at the start of a game, it's not going to be a great day for you. You're not really ready to play. So finding a way to harness those nerves and not let them affect you in a negative way, that's what all the guys are looking for. And past the 40 before he's out of bounds. A well-executed 22-yard game. Nice play call, a little bit of play action right there. If you can get those linebackers to freeze for just a split sec. Sean Payton not liking that last call. He's going to go ahead and challenge it. Did he keep those feet in bounds? That's the question they've got to decide. And I got to say, watching it in real time, it was awfully close. Yeah, it certainly looked like a heck of a catch because he didn't appear to bobble it, which could complicate things. But even with the benefit of replay, that's pretty tight. Well, here's the call. After review of the play, ruling on the field stands. So the challenge there does not go their way. This will indeed remain a completed pass. On the run, this is J.K. Dobbins. And he will be brought down at about the 43 that time. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Well, sometimes you just have to give credit to the defense. Great job there at the point of attack, holding up. They won their battles at the line of scrimmage, left him no space to try and run. A really nice job swarming to the ball carrier. Now Jackson on second down. That'll be complete to Dobbins. And it's a big play there as he is finally taken down on what will be a terrific final act of this first quarter. No score after one on EA Sports. Second quarter now from Baltimore. It's the Ravens in possession as they've got it with a first and ten. Jackson going to give this one to Edwards. And he's down inside the five at the four before he's out of bounds. Well, 
Seven more on that one and another first down. They're making it look easy out there. Another first down. So, so far on this drive, let me do this little bit of math here. Four plays, three first downs. That's a pretty good recipe for success. Here we go now on first and goal. Dobbins will take this into the end zone. It's a Ravens touchdown. Well, he finishes off the drive with a touchdown run, Charles. Remember, he also had a catch on this drive as well. And that's what running backs want to be in today's NFL, a complete back. Three downs, stay on the field, run it, and catch it. And he gets it done. Justin Tucker for the extra point. And the Ravens lead it 7-0. So that drive span five plays. And it's finished off by a touchdown run from J.K. Dobbins. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. From his end zone, Marvin Mims. And that decision to bring it out ends up not being a good one. Cost him about five yards as he's tackled at the 20. So now the second drive offensively coming up for the Denver Broncos. They'll be looking to match that touchdown from a moment ago. 7-0 is the score as they begin with a first down. Now it's Stidham. And that one drops down incomplete. Good coverage there, forced the ball free, and it's second down. As his old brain remembers, when I see five wide receivers on the field as a defender, I know the ball's coming out hot. They expected it and got there and popped it free. After the incompletion, here's second and 10 from the 20. Now it's Stidham. And that falls to the ground, incomplete. A nice job of bodying him up defensively, and now it brings up third down. I have to give some credit to the defender on that when he read all of his keys perfectly and got a great break on the ball and able to force that incompletion. The threat of a second straight punt to start the game is looming as they come up third and ten. Stidham. And he goes down. The Ravens able to get to him. Multiple players combined for their team's first sack of the game. And every game we talk about what are going to be the keys as we go into it. Maybe that's a key for their defense today. Pressure the quarterback and make sure you play a good zone defense behind them. And they get their first sack of the contest. Dixon, the punter, is on as he sends it away. Taken from just outside the 30. It'll be a 51-yard punt that time. And the Ravens will take over. Now the Baltimore offense heading back out onto the field. Things progressing to plan so far. Their defense has been solid, and they've got themselves a 7-0 lead after the touchdown the last time they had the ball. And this is no time to even think about, hey, are we going to milk the clock? Hey, are we just going to do ball control? This is the NFL. 7-0 leads, they don't last very long unless you continue to push the envelope on offense. Jackson on first down. And this is going to be pulled in by the tight end Andrews. 15 yards is the pick up there in the drive starting very nicely. First down. A lot of tight ends just use their size and their strength, try to occupy some space and kind of body people away and catch the football. But not this guy. He's a refined route runner. Makes me wonder if he took some dance classes in his background with his footwork. the play fake. Here's Jackson. Throw left side complete. That's Flowers. Then he'll go out of bounds after taking it a little further down inside the 40. They don't need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. Let's see if they do it anyway. Jackson on the give to Dobbins. And the reinforcements come in as they're going to stop him behind the line. 
That's going to go down as a loss of five, and it brings up third down. Two minutes on the clock, second quarter, 7-0 ball game. And they'll need to get to the 35 if they want to keep this drive going on third down. Now Jackson. Looking for Aguilar, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Justin Simmons. And the Broncos are going to get it back here just past the 35. So this defense coming up with a takeaway, and maybe that's something that can bring a little life to that sideline. Well, I don't want to say that they've been sleepwalking through this first half because that's simply not true, but you're right. We haven't seen a lot of fire from these guys, really, on either side of the ball. So maybe that's the catalyst that they needed to get them back into this game. Good starting position for the Broncos here as they come up first and 10 at their 36-yard line. After the interception, here's Stidham. This one swung out to Williams. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. They'll give him four yards there, and it'll be second down. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you just swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. Throwing again on second down, but this time it's incomplete. And he's only hit on two of his first six passes. Time for a quick quarterback regroup here with a big third down coming up. So after the second down incompletion, they'll come up now against a third and six. Stidham. Screenplay set up for Williams. And they're going to mark him down short, maybe by about a yard, if that. Now the Ravens going to use one of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Riley Dixon now to punt it away. And the kicks away as he angles this one for the sideline. And this will be out of bounds. Now it's a question of where they'll mark it. And they'll say it crosses at the 11-yard line. The Ravens ready to take over. There was still more than a minute to go in the half. Time to try to mount a drive. And I would think that they would have to. This is today's NFL. you got to push it whenever you get an opportunity. You could never have enough points with the high-powered offenses that you face. And analytics will tell you try and score when given the opportunity. On the ground with Hill to begin the drive. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple and that's it. Certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground. But I think the play gets made by the defensive front because if they can't get upfield, their job is to go ahead and get low, almost get into a ball sometimes, stack things up, and make it difficult for the runner to find a hole. On second down, Jackson. He throws it on the move but can't connect as that fall is incomplete. Not sure what happened out there, but it looked like the timing was a little off on that throw. Well, you know I'm a defender, so what am I going to say? Great defense. And darn right, they did something to disrupt that timing. So the failure to connect on second down, that leaves him staring up here at a third and eight. Jackson now. And the Broncos get there and take him down. Now the Broncos going to use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop the clock with 26 seconds to go until halftime. The Ravens send their punter out now as he'll punt it away for the second time. A big kick there. We'll call it 56 yards on the punt. And control of the football switching hands with very little time remaining until the half. The Broncos going to get one more possession in this first half. 
And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively, they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. They've got good starting field position as they come up here first and 10 at their 38. To throw is Stidham. And Sutton hauls it in over the middle. And this winds up a gain of four to the 41. Now the Broncos will use their third and final timeout as they'll stop it with 13 seconds to play in half number one. Now a second and six. Here's Stidham to throw. He's going to go for a big play downfield. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. And they've been kept off the scoreboard in this first half, but here toward the end, they're trying to change that one fell swoop, but that winds up incomplete. Final play of the half, it's Stidham. He's going to let it go again. That's caught inside the 20. So we've reached halftime with just the lone touchdown here. 7-0 is our score. As we'll send you down to Orlando, we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, back to you, too, in just a bit. But first, welcome everyone to downtown Orlando in our EA Sports Halftime Report. We were treated to a fine first half from running back J.K. Dobbins. He wound up finding the end zone on a touchdown run to help give his guys the advantage here at the break. Okay, Coach, yeah, adjustments likely going to play a big role in this third quarter in what's been a tight contest so far. Just the one touchdown in that first half. 7-0 our score as we get going in quarter number three. This taken in at the goal line. And he will make it back to the 15, and that's it. Good coverage there by the kick team. Here comes the Broncos offensive unit here as they'll have it first to begin this third quarter. This is a game, Charles, that's been fairly starved for offense. Really not much in that first half. We'll see if they can get something going here as we look toward the third quarter. And not just a chance to finally get a little more offense going, but to erase that small deficit they currently trail by. I think they'd send a pretty powerful message to the opposite sideline if they drive it right down the field coming out of the half. They start the second half here with Williams. And he'll lose yardage on this one back to the 13. It was Jadavian Clowney who got upfield for the stop. This defense is just flat getting after it. They have not given up much of anything in the run game. Case in point right there. So the opening play of the drive goes backwards. Now they'll come up on second and 12. Stidham from the shotgun. And this one nearly intercepted. Boy, that would have been a great time for their first pick. But instead, it's third down. Really good coverage all along the field that took away his intended read and almost dared him to try for his guy out of the backfield. No surprise on that one. It doesn't connect. On third down, Stidham. That's going to be caught by Judy. And he'll only get this to the 17, well shy of what he needed. It'll go as a gain of four. And that'll bring up fourth down. Here's Riley Dixon now, standing just outside his own goal line. Averaging over 50 yards a punt so far as this one's away. And take it right on the 30. A nice job getting free on the return for 13 yards. And it will be first and 10 as they take over. The Ravens offense getting ready now for their first possession of the second half. 
Their defense has pitched the shutout. Now they probably need to deliver a little breathing room, maybe make it a two-score game as they've got it first and ten. From the gun, it's Jackson. He'll be brought down by the Broncos. It's a sack. Josie Jewell, the linebacker, getting the sack. I'm sure a lot of time was spent in the locker room, Charles, and talking with his defense about setting a tone here in the third quarter when you're down on the scoreboard. A sack like that, maybe that can get them going. Yeah, you have to believe exactly what you just said, that they got together and said, let's be some change agents here. Let's go ahead and turn things around. Let's be the force that gets us going here in the second half and puts us in a position to find a way to win the game. So five yards here, five on the play. And that'll make it third and 13. I know sometimes we can get fooled when we watch him make catches as we just saw him do there because he really looks like a wide receiver the way he goes about his business. Yeah, 230, 240 range. Yeah, not, not super huge. Maybe not counted on to be that inline point of attack blocker that we used to have in the good old days. But you can flex him now. You can run wide receiver routes with him. You can make him a primary target. And that's how he'll shred the defense. That is certainly one way to frustrate a quarterback. Run those extra defenders on the field. Dime package. Lots of speed. No space to fit in the football. The Ravens in their punter out now as he's on to kick it away. And that one hits a little too close to the goal line and it continues into the end zone for a touchback. And we get another look now at this Broncos offense. And here we are almost through three quarters of play, and this passing game still has not really found any kind of rhythm. Put it mildly, because they're not even over 100 yards yet. And in today's NFL, where it's a pass-first league, that is quite surprising. Not many teams patient enough to stick with the run. Everybody wants to advance the ball through the air. They've got to get their timing back. We couldn't ask for much more to this point in the second half. A gorgeous day, one-score game. First and ten here. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. Yeah, I don't know if it's exactly a win-win, but if you're on offense, you'll take that kind of a run, all right? It was kind of stacked up, found a little bit of yardage, and frankly, they're pretty close to staying on schedule on offense. The playbook is still open for the coordinator. Second down, Stidham to throw. That's caught left side by Judy. And Judy's going to have a Broncos first down as he'll get this up across the 30-yard line. Call it a gain of seven, and it gets him a new set of downs. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. They'll run out of the gun here, Williams. And just no chance of turning the corner. He can only get back to the line of scrimmage. Second and 10 coming up. Absolutely love the effort there. The ability to flow from his inside spot and stop that one at the line of scrimmage. Nice linebacker play. Third quarter of a tight football game as we come up on a second and 10. A toss to the wide side. This is Williams. And he'll scratch out only about a yard up to the 32. So they'll get a little extra time to come up with his third down play as we played three quarters. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Baltimore. One of the bigger plays in the game thus far. The crowd getting into it as we come up on a big third down. From the gun, it's Stidham. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he will have the Broncos first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Even though this offense doesn't have a single point to its name, they're not totally out of this game yet. A touchdown here, they could be in business. And how about that last play? Now they've got momentum going, so you know I'm a big advocate. Get back on the line of scrimmage. Throw another play out of while you've got them rocked on their heels. The drive continues as they search for a tying touchdown. Here's first and ten. Out of the gun, Stidham. And he will find his man, Sutton. That's complete. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. Another first down as they call his number again. He's got 15 yards here. 
Well, that certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. As soon as he leaked down and began his route, someone on the defensive side broke with him and arrived just in time to separate him from another reception. Second and 10. Now Stidham. Open man, he completes it to Judy. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. Oh, it's time to give a little credit there to the defense. They played that very well because it was a drag route, and he ran a little shallower than normal as he worked straight across the field. He was hoping he'd get lost behind the defensive line. But once he made the catch, nowhere to turn up field and gain any yardage. Again, Stidham. Pressure come from. Fourth and six now. They'll try and throw for it with Stidham. And able to catch it, but he's out of bounds. And a throw took it beyond the sideline, and that's going to be a turnover on downs. So the failure to convert, no doubt, really hurts. But this one's not over. A good chunk of time on the clock and the timeouts. Yeah, not only do they have the timeouts, as you just noted, they're going to get an extra one with the two-minute warning. And that's going to help them big way. So in a sense, they have four timeouts in their pocket. The big thing, stopping them on defense now. They can't let them get a first down and make them use their timeouts and get a fresh set of downs. They've got to stop them right here. And if so, they've still got an opportunity. Now here's a pass on first down. It's knocked away and incomplete. So many times when we talk about coverage, we're just talking about a defender running with a receiver. But a big part of it is understanding where the football is, finding it. In this case, when it arrived, it wasn't a surprise, and he was able to bat it away. Now a second and 10. Jackson with a handoff to Dobbins on the option. And he's going to have to protect the football and take his lumps here at this stage of the game as they stop him behind the line. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes, and we've got a one-score game. So it's Raven football here as we welcome you back. Possibly a turning point. Big play coming. This is third and long. Try to take this home. They'll run. And so the to run over. And he's taken down, but not before he gets to the Broncos 38 yard line. And quickly, we're going to get another stop here with 154 left as they call the timeout defensively. So how about that for a chain mover? They're all the way down inside the 40 now for first and 10. They'll go again with Dobbins. Down at the 35, it'll be second down. Now the Broncos gonna use the second of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. to imagine this will be on the ground as well as they come up second and seven. A give up the middle to Dobbins. And he gets this one inside the 15, just a yard or two shy of the 10. And they will take a knee here. Oh, 
On second down, it's Edwards. And he'll find his way down right around the 12. But not much on that run, Charles. No, that's exactly the way to execute a run blitz there. They guessed correctly that they would move the ball on the ground, honed in on it, and stopped him. Mark that down for a win in the defense's column. Down to a knee goes Jackson, and that should seal it. Brandon, I can just tell you from experience, there's nothing like pitching a shutout on defense, but even more so when it's a tight game. I mean, when every defensive play is crucial and you don't give up any points, boy, they're going to feel awfully good about themselves after this one. Yeah, exactly. The offense wasn't humming, but hey, all they needed was... Well, you can't score one point. All they needed was two points. You can't score two points on offense. All they needed was at least three, and they got what they needed. They got what they needed. Exactly right. So the final seconds tick away in this Baltimore victory. And not all W's are created equal, CD, and this one came in shutout fashion. Well, their offense certainly didn't need to do anything, right? They could take the day off, and they did. But the defense, they carried them in a big way. Yeah, look, the offense, obviously stuff to work on, but they did enough, and the defense carried the load. But you know what they say, it's always fun to work on things if it didn't go well in your game with a victory in your pocket. And that's what they've got going forward. So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis.